Greetings and welcome to this 30k painting tutorial. Tonight we begin with the first in a series of three videos on the Forge World Dreadnought Drop Pod. Although I will be painting this in 30k World Leaders colors, these techniques can be applied to most other color schemes with little to no modification. What you see now is what we will end up with at the end of this video. The goal tonight is to prime the model, base coat the metallics, and to create a rust undercoat. In the next video you will see how we use chipping fluid so that undercoat can be visible under our world eaters white and blue. Let's get started with part one, airbrushing the primer. You might be wondering why it is that I'm priming this model twice, first in black and then with German red-brown. My original intention was to just go with the Dunkelrot, but despite my best efforts at washing the resin, there was some mold release agent left, so I wanted to play it safe. As you can see, I'm thinning it down slightly, both with thinner and a couple of drops of water. I'm using my trusty Badger Patriot 105. Here you can see how easy it is to lay down thin coats of this Vallejo primer, which by the way I highly recommend. Really good product. or base coating the metallic areas, including the interior. The idea behind doing this at this stage was to save time and keep the model as clean as possible. Any overspray now is very easy to fix, while it would be much harder to do once we applied the World Eater's White and Blue scheme. The paint I'm using, as you can see, is Vallejo Model Air Gunmetal, which I really like. It's fairly easy to airbrush, like all model air paints. The finish is hardly perfect, doesn't need to be. All the metals will be heavily weathered later on. So this is really a foundation. If you're wondering about that, Masking putty. I could do a separate video about that. It's really good for camouflage. The real fun starts now with the rust undercoat. What we're trying to create is a realistic rust effect with some color transitions where the recessed areas are darker. There are some mid-tones, with the medium rust and the primer showing, and then some light rust, which will be stippled in the panels. I'm using three different paints by MIG. They're all acrylics. Here you can see the shadow rust. Just trying to hit the recessed areas. We 
with the medium rust, this mid-tone, we'll see that we're going to create a much more striking effect. And basically a gradient of colors. If you're wondering why I'm not hitting the center panels on the doors with this medium rust, the reason for that is that those panels will be in World Leaders Blue. And what I will want to show underneath that will not be the rust itself, but actually the white. So I'll be painting the blue over the white on those panels. Airbrush stippling creates a light granulated texture which gives a very convincing impression of actual rusted metal. This we achieve by lowering the pressure down to 5 psi or even less. Now once again for the finished results, which you've already seen at the start. The real magic, however, will take place in the next video, where you will see how our World Eater's White is chipped, revealing this rusted metal underneath and this gradient of colors that we've created. I hope this has been useful and enjoyable. If so, please give me a like and consider subscribing to the channel. As always, thank you all for watching and goodbye.